What is up you guys? Today I want to talk about something that I think is crazy. Like I am on the tail end of my first trimester already. I don't know where the time has gone. Like it literally went so quickly. But I just want to give you guys like I find these videos very helpful. So for me, when I first found out that I was pregnant, I was literally like a research machine. You could find me before I went to bed at like nine, 10 o'clock in bed, laying with my phone in front of my face on a YouTube video, learning about some aspect of pregnancy, like what to learn or what you expect in the first, second and third trimester, what you need to know giving birth, um, everything. like. What are the must-haves for a newborn? What things do you wish that you knew? So anyways, for me, the research literally like had zero fucking chill. 4 a.m., I'm up, phone in front of my face, learning something else on YouTube. And so videos like this helped me a lot and I loved hearing what to expect in your first trimester in pregnancy. And I'm gonna start out by saying something that every time I heard it, I was like, ugh, like it sounded so, The feeling of losing hope, whatever that feeling is, like when you feel like you're starting to understand something and then someone says this, like every pregnancy is going to be completely different and then every woman is going to experience her pregnancies completely different. But like since you have a different baby in you, then your pregnancies are going to be different. And so for me, I absolutely hated hearing that because the minute that I felt like I really started understanding more about pregnancy, someone would say that and like kind of just bring me back down to earth and just remember that, you know, this is something that, no, nope, this is something that is going to be different and isn't going to be the same, but there's basic guidelines that you can follow and kind of like get a better idea on what to expect in your first trimester. Sorry guys, I have my vision board right there and my dog's walking around and I just don't want her to walk on it cause she's like, she's that type of dog. Um, anyways, my vision board video is coming up soon. It's almost done. It's on the floor right now and it just needs to be transferred to the wall. So I am gonna do that tomorrow cause I'm just so friggin' tired. That's a good place to start. First trimester, I did not understand how tired I was going to be. And it's not a consistent feeling of being tired. And what I mean by that is like, in the first month, I felt totally fine. Like, I don't have, I don't remember having a lot of symptoms in the first month, except for knowing that I definitely was having mood swings. I remember making bacon one morning, my boyfriend coming up behind me and saying that he wanted more bacon, and then me crying and crying and crying because... I believed that my calculations for how much bacon I should be making were perfect. And then because he told me that they weren't, I was incredibly devastated, but at the same time, I thought it was really funny that I was laughing or that I was crying over that. And so I was laughing and I was crying. So I remember having mood swings, but that was pretty much it. Like that was the max to my symptoms. Now, fatigue. For my first like second month, I remember waking up at like nine or 10 a.m going to work for 11 and by 1 p.m. feeling like I really needed a nap. And not just like a nap would be good right now, but you know when your efficiency really starts to drop in a given activity and you're like, ah, like you're just dozing off. I remember talking to customers and not even being present in the conversation or repeating some things over again. And I was like tripping over my words. I could just like tell if these people give me a few minutes, then I'm actually going to turn out to be someone that's super bright and very knowledgeable in my industry. But if they don't, and if they just give me 30 seconds, they're going to be like, she is so fucking dumb. I can't believe like how dumb that girl is. So I remember that being a thing and I wanted to nap again at four. So I'd like wake up at nine or 10, want to nap at one, want to nap at four. And I mean like hard crashes. And then by like seven or eight, I was in bed until 10, like nine or 10 the next morning. So it was just crazy. I spent most of my time sleeping. That's something that kind of went away in the third month, but then came back here and there. Like I slept for 12 or 13 hours two nights ago. And then last night, 
I felt rested, but I still slept like a 10 hour shift. And um, it's 8.30, almost nine o'clock now. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get this video done so I can go to bed. Like that's where we're at. And I was like hanging out with my boyfriend and I'm like borderline falling asleep. So it like comes and goes in the third month, but I felt like after the second month was done, I really felt like I was a little zombie that was starting to come back to life. Morning sickness started probably around the second month and was just crazy. Forget about the word morning and morning sickness. That's not what they mean. What they mean is like an instant nauseous feeling that can grab you at any point of the morning, afternoon, or evening and will. Like it's like this little gremlin hiding in the corner that anytime you think of something gross or some kind of food that you have a food aversion to, that's another huge one that I had. Or even just other smells. I remember my boyfriend's cologne really just started to turn me off and would make me super nauseous, which was sad for him because his love language is physical affection. So I'm like, get away. And he's like, mm. but um, certain smells, certain foods would cause like so much nausea. I remember being sick with the flu and I would cough and then I would almost puke. So that was really, really fun. Um, but some important things that I learned at that phase of my life was I thought that I really needed to slow it down because I don't know where I get this information from, but I figured if my body is under so much a demand to create this whole new life, I figured, you know what, that probably lowers your immune system. And that was just kind of a thought that I had within myself, but it became a limiting belief because it's not actually true. So. Once I learned that that wasn't true, I felt like I could push myself a little bit more than I was because I was really taking my foot off the gas. And then that just started to cause other problems with me because of my personality. And so I feel like if I'm not doing enough, then I'm not satisfied with myself and then I'm upset with myself. And then it causes like this like spiritual depression where you feel burnt out and you feel this and that. And it was just because I wasn't allowing myself to do the things that I wanted to do and I was really taking my foot off the gas. And that's something that you're going to hear a lot when you go into pregnancy is people are going to be like, you know, listen to your body, take the time off that you need, take the rest that you need, get it now because you're not going to get it later. I think that all of this is a pile of bullshit and while there is some truth to needing rest and needing to listen to your body and stuff like that, I mean... To the extreme that society brings it to and to the extreme that people around me were bringing it to, I just think that it was a little bit out of proportion for what I needed. And what I needed was actually to stay on my routine as much as possible and just be intuitive with the rest that I needed if that came about. But stick to your routine, stick to your mornings. You know, if you have a morning that entails XYZ, then get XYZ done because I can assure you that when you're tired and you're laying down for that nap or you're tired and you're finishing your day, you want to go to bed with a good feeling because there's so much demand on your body right now that having those good feelings sometimes is fleeting when you're waking up and you're nauseous and you're crying over bacon and you know you just feel like your body is doing something that an 80 year old would where you want to nap twice a day and then you know sleep for 14 hours. So getting those wins and keeping your routine and keeping your structure in is the thing that's gonna keep you from going over the edge and start experiencing depression like symptoms and stuff like that. Um, I will be honest, that's something that I saw coming in because I'm so familiar with that in my life and I've struggled with like depression before. I noticed that if I don't start pushing on the gas right now, I'm going to slip into this. And I've had a little bit come in, but it's not like an actual depression. It's more of like a spiritual depression where I just feel super fucking tired. I feel tired doing everything all the time, which is like not a good feeling. But the more that I stick to my routine, my program and my goals, the more that I'm able to stay on the right path. And what else? Let me just think. Cramps, pain, this might be TMI, but I'm gonna go there because I like transparent people and so I wanna be someone that I like. And I'm just gonna be transparent with you. So cramps was something that was super frequent. You have to think that your uterus is stretching to accommodate something that, if it's your first pregnancy, has never been accommodated for before. 
So your uterus is going to be stretching. You're going to feel pains with that. For me, it happened like when I was sneezing, like I would sneeze and I'm like, oh my God, like that hurts so bad. So now I have to like bend over before I sneeze. So when I feel a sneeze coming on, I'm like bending over. Um, but what I found out that was, was just short ligament pain. And that's really nothing to worry about, but it is something that's just kind of annoying. Cramps, you get them and they come and go. For me in this pregnancy, at least, it's been something that came and went. But it's also because I'm very in tune with my body and so I, I could even feel myself ovulate when I was ovulating before. I could feel like what side I was ovulating from. And so when you're so in tune, sometimes it does have its downfall. So I can feel my uterus being stretched. I can feel these things like start to change in my body. And so um, cramps was something that obviously came hand in hand with that. The TMI part is that with your uterus stretching, your cervix is going to have a lot more blood flow. So during the first and second month, first and a half, let's just say, sex was amazing. Like it was super great because it actually felt better than normal. And then going into like the tail end of my first trimester, it was the complete opposite. Like it was so freaking painful. It was like terrible 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 and then of course you cry over that right because you're pregnant and you got your hormones all over the place um that's pretty much it what would I want to know going into my first trimester again I mean obviously I would want to know these things I think that it's good to have an idea of what to kind of expect in terms of symptoms because then if you start getting these symptoms you're not like oh my gosh like there's no panic but for me, what I spend most of my time researching is birth and really learning how you want to enable your body to give a natural birth. So for me, my goal and my birth plan is that I want a natural and unmedicated birth. But to be able to do that, a lot of women don't have the education that they need to be able to allow their body to naturally progress through your pregnancy, to be able to, you know, avoid getting induced, to be, a be I'm really tired here, to have enough information and have enough people on your team that are informed, to be able to know what the options are when you're approaching a certain fork in the road or a certain decision that needs to be made. So really what I spent a lot of my time educating myself on is what's gonna happen during labor and then what's gonna happen after birth. Like what do you actually do with this baby? What are the things that you need for this baby? So for me, I spent a lot of my time in research but really learning about what you need to do to enable your body to have the most empowering and beautiful birth was something that attracted a lot of my attention and this is what I spent a lot of my time doing because I just think that it's actually something that's beautiful. And once you get pregnant, especially in my first trimester, there was a point where I was scared about giving birth. And then there was a point where I was like chill about it, but I think it was mostly because I wasn't paying attention to the fact that at some point this baby needed to come out of me somehow. And then towards like probably like the third month of my first trimester, the, all of the panic just started rushing back as if I knew nothing about how I got rid of it the first time and so what I did is I just turned back to how I educated myself the first time but I went more in depth got more knowledge I bought a few courses I um also have a doula so on my birth team I have someone that has been through this process many times and herself like been through the process herself as well so that makes me feel just so much better to know that I have these people there to advocate for me. Um, having a great relationship with your significant other, if that's something that you have on your side, I think that it is incredibly, incredibly, incredibly important and beneficial. And if you don't, you know, that's fine. You can replace those people with other people in your life. And maybe it's your parents, maybe it's your friends. Like if you have a friend that, you know, can advocate for you in that way. And if you have some money, then I totally recommend getting a doula because that's someone that spends their whole day knowing about this stuff, learning about this stuff, and can definitely help you out in ways that your mom or your dad or your significant other 
just can't help you out with. But I really think that there's something super comforting and I don't want to spend too much time on this just because if someone doesn't have this, but I think that there's something so comforting about having a significant other that's like a tad bit more excited than you and more supportive than you and more comforting than you because it just makes your life so much fucking easier. You can literally just like shut your brain off and just be willing to accept all of the energy that's being flowed to you. And I think that that is so incredibly beautiful. So if I could wish for something for you, it would definitely be that you have a significant other or someone that is just there fearlessly and brings like God energy and love into your space and just empowers you to understand that you definitely can do this. Your body is definitely able to do this. And whatever the circumstance is that you manifested a soul onto this planet, just know that you and that soul, because as soon as you do give birth, you are always going to have cells of that soul that is manifested um, onto the planet within you. And so you're going to have a life tied to this person that you have created with your own body. And I just think that that is an incredible blessing because... I remember being pregnant and telling my dad this. Like, when I first found out, I was like, everyone's saying congrats, but it's like, all I did was have sex. Like, why is everyone so, like, you know? And then my dad said something, and it was, like, super true but super blunt, and I was just like, whoa, what? And he was like, well, because you're not going to die alone. And I was like, holy shit. Like, that's actually a good point. If you nurture this relationship, it literally be, will be a relationship that will follow you all the way throughout your life. And, you know, potentially even leave a legacy for you. I know for me in my life with my dad, like, I speak so highly of him because he did such a great job at being a parent and being there for me throughout my life. And that's just something that I can never be grateful enough for. And it's true. Like, when you have this life that comes into your life and you have this, like, blessing you can really choose what you want to do with that. And I just think that that opens up so much incredible doors and just like the doors to a complete and utter blessing. And yeah, I'm just going to kind of leave you guys with that. If you have anything else that like, if you've been through your pregnancy and you've been through your first trimester, let me know what things I might've missed out on. Even if it wasn't like personal experiences just let me know in the comments that way people watching this video can actually like get an idea of what other things can happen um also if you are pregnant let me know where you're at and if you're not let me know what